Bond is back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week two of the Vikings 2023 NFL season. Many apologies. I really wanted to be back for week one. I even recorded an episode, but uh, it was all blurry. I'm in a new studio. Hopefully the audio is okay. Um, I'm working out some bugs. I'm really excited about the new space because it gives me a little bit of room to do some fun things, but it didn't work out for week one. Week one always falls on the weekend of the Osceola Fair and... That only happens once a year, so that takes up my priorities. Uh, I do want to say, though, right off the bat, my mom pitched the idea of a Back to Skull episode and how cool that would be. And I had really, really fun ideas for it, um, but I obviously I ran out of August in which to do it. So I'm going to do an abridged version of what I had planned for that right now. But how dare I say right now, I should tell you, this year has a new hook. I'm going to try every week of the season, because frankly, I've had all the beers. I've drank all the beers. There, I go to the, the local stores. I go to the breweries. I've, I've had them all. I need a new challenge. And this year's challenge, it is the year of the mead. It is, it is Jake's foray into mixed media. I'm making the change immediately. Buckle up. I have a lot of these. So this week, I'm actually throwing back to season one when Uncle Brad and uh, Kim got me the, the um, Viking blood from Dansk uh, I am This week, I am enjoying Odin's skull. Let me get that right there. See? Odin's skull. It's holographic. It's purple. It's shiny. It's beautiful. Odin's skull is a Nordic honey wine with sour apple juice, hops, and cinnamon added. 19% alcohol by volume. Uh, Odin, the one-eyed and long-bearded, often carrying a spear, might be one of the most complex characters in Norse mythology. This brew is intended to honor Odin's name, Master of Inspiration and Fury. Made solely from 100% natural ingredients, served slightly chilled in a wine glass or warm as the mulled wine. Odin's skull ages well, there may be yeast sediment in the bottom of the bottle. Product of Denmark. So, not quite as local as some of my beer tastes, but we're going to roll with it anyway. Friends, we made it through several months of darkness. Football is back. Yeah, losing to the Bucks was probably another week of darkness, but we're going to try to get through it. Skull feel it there. Check out that sweet honey toned texture. This will be a fun adventure. Mmm. Mmm. First thought, right out of the bat, as I was pulling it up, I could smell the cinnamon. And then you get the honey, right? It tastes like honey. And then you get a little bit of the sour apple to kind of kind of dampen the sweetness. And then cinnamon to finish. I'm I'm gonna so okay with beer. I, just, I started like, oh, this is a beer, and it's a lager, and I hear lagers are, like, lighter. You've all watched this, all five of you, so you know that my, my beer knowledge increased quite a bit over the course of the last couple seasons. Um, I'm going to have to apply that to mead. So I don't, this is good. It's sweet. I probably wouldn't want much more than, like, a glass like this, like a, a, a sipping glass. Um, the cinnamon is really pleasant. This is really good. Mmm. I'm going to set that aside. But yeah, thank you, uh, Danks Mjord, Odin Skull, 
Very tasty. If you're local, you can find it at Marketplace. They have a mead section. Okay. Back to Skull. Starting with history. If any of you know me, uh, talk to me about this series, um, you know that I have a complex about not being the best at stats, the best at remembering, oh yeah, that was the year that, he, you know, that third string running back had that breakout season towards the end of the, you know, the year and got in the, I'm not good at that stuff. If there is something I can recommend to you hardcore fans out there, or even the fans who are somewhat, I don't know, at a distance, you know, you watch on Sundays, but you don't, you know, you just know the Vikings are snake bitten. The, um, the Secret Base YouTube channel has a, a series called Dorktown, and, and they do breakdowns of the history of franchises across all sports, not just football, about, like, how historically weird they are. And this year was the Vikings' turn in the barrel, and it's, I want to say, like, six episodes on YouTube, totally free. They're about 45 minutes to an hour each. They are masterfully done. They break down all the history of the Vikings. Like, I'm honestly really impressed. There's not, it's not, um, it's a bit dry, to be completely honest. It's, um, they break down, like, the Vikings record and they look at newspaper clippings and they show kind of some highlight reels. And, you know, they talk about Bud Grant nearly dying in a snowstorm and all of the lore of the Vikings franchise and also how many single play disasters had to happen for the Vikings to be the successful franchise that they are with no Super Bowl victories. Just the amount of, of statistical anomalies that had to happen. But most importantly, they go through the entire history of the Vikings. Every head coach, the stars that, that showed up for the Vikings. It's a great series for anybody who might care. I cannot recommend it enough. Go watch it. Um, Dorktown History of the Minnesota Vikings should take you there on YouTube. Watch one episode. If you like it, you'll like all of them. If you are bored out of your mind, you can move on. Social studies. So this was going to be the segment in which I looked at um, some things that I'd saved from the offseason talking about the Vikings, uh, interesting statistics, opinions, hot takes, that kind of stuff. It was going to be really cool. Uh, it's all outdated now. So we're, we're just going to move on, except for I do want to say um, I do follow most of the win um, Minnesota women's sports teams on on Twitter. And uh, the Vixen, which is the women's football team, I think lost in like the conference championship. And they've like been in the conference championships like back to back years. Uh, the Minnesota Aurora, full disclosure, partial community owner, um, uh, was had an undefeated season and lost in the conference championships, and uh, the Whitecaps, the Whitecaps, the, the women's hockey team, tragically, they have been in like the finals like four out of the last five years or five out of the last six or something like that. I apologize, I'm not doing it justice, and lost in the finals, I believe, again this year, and now the franchise might not exist anymore. Because the uh, two primary women's hockey friend, uh, hockey leagues in North America are merging, and it might mean that Minnesota loses their Whitecaps team. Uh, but I wanted to bring all that up to say, Minnesota women's sports generally get it done. They're all making the playoffs every year, but in true Minnesota sports fashion, nothing but heartbreak. I shouldn't say that. I mean, like, the Whitecaps have won. I think the Vixen maybe have won. And of course, there's the links, but I don't follow basketball, men's or women's, so I can't really speak to that. Anyway. Home economics. It's very important to have and maintain a budget, which is why I believe this last season, the new management, Quasi Adolfo Mensa and Kevin O'Connell, the head coach, finally decided to move on from a lot of the veterans that the Vikings had on the roster, some of which have spent their entire career here, some of which were late season signings. But we are talking about the likes of Patrick Peterson, Zadarius Smith, Eric Kendricks, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, 
and more. Also, you can, if you own an air fryer, find unbreaded pre-cooked chicken wings and make them in an air fryer for a healthy, low-carb, protein-rich snack during game day. It's a very healthy alternative to the standard fare that you might get at a cookout. But back to talking about budgets, the Vikings are trying to free up cap space by restructuring contracts, letting some veterans go, doing a soft rebuild, which hopefully it works, but we do need to make sure that we are building in room. We've already re-signed TJ Hawkinson. We need to make sure we have room and work aggressively to sign Justin Jefferson. It would be a crying shame to lose another otherworldly talent who should be in purple his entire career. Statistics and mathematics. If you know me, you know these are not my strong suit, but I can tell you, along with anybody else who watched football last year, that the Vikings achieved statistically improbable results. They were in the regular season, like 11 and 0 in one season or in one score games before losing a one score game in the playoffs and then promptly losing another one score game to start the season. Anyway, in 2021, they were really bad in one score games and regression came for them hard in 2022. And now in 2023, we're all just praying like the median, like let's just get like a normal amount of we win some one score games, we lose some one score games, please God, let it be normal because our hearts can't take anymore. Philosophy. This is possibly the thing that I have tapped into most while making these Vikings videos. Ultimately, sports means nothing. But it, sports also mean everything. In much the same way that money means, paper money means nothing and everything. It means something because we agree it does. If tomorrow the petroleum dries up, there are no planes, helicopters, ambulances, or fire trucks, we are going back to pre-industrialized civilization, and you better believe that the giant stadiums that we dedicate to pro football are going to become courts for warlords to hold. And money will have no power whatsoever. We're going to be trading bullets for jam and homemade wine for medicine. In much the same way, football will mean nothing. Football will mean, but it means something because we agree it means something. So sometimes it's really weird to talk and even care about football when there's so much going on in the world. But it means something because we agree it means something. And above and beyond football in general, Vikings fandom... I need to pull up this quote. Deadspin always used to do this article called Why Your Team Sucks. And they would go through all 32 NFL franchises and talk about, you know, all the things that are bad about your team. And if you want to look for it, um, now it's being posted on defector.com. So if you Google defector, why your team sucks, there is some language in it. Um, and it's kind of superfluous, but it's not necessarily... No, no, it's, it's, it's for entertainment purposes. But one of my favorite parts of that article every year, apart from the complete takedown of the franchise that I love most, and it actually is the favorite franchise of the guy who writes the article, is the comments at the end. Because some it was the first time that I realized that other fans felt the same way as I do about the Vikings. The only thing worse than cheering for this team always letting you down is suffering through the fan base who insists that they actually hate the team and that this hatred serves as some sort of talisman against getting too attached. I often feel like I should back off from the Vikings a bit. I should cool it. I should be a more casual fan. And I keep getting hooked in. And I've talked about this. The Vikings hook you in just to break your heart when you swore you would never let them do it again. It's magical. That is their superpower, which is dumb. It's a franchise made up of 53 dudes who change week to week, year to year. And this bitterness, this like, oh, they're never going to win the big game, we, we hold as some sort of like talisman that we're not going to let ourselves get fooled again. And I sympathize with that sentiment very much. So philosophically, is it worth being a Vikings fan? 
I argue yes. I argue we are supporting a, a franchise, a team that has been a winning franchise since day one overall. I mean, if you look at the average, if you watch the Dorktown series, you will see the Vikings are top three or four most winning franchises. At this point, I've been on this ride all my life, all my memorable life. Let's say the last 30 years, which is ridiculous. I've been on this earth that long. For 30 years, I've supported this team. I don't want to jump off just before they make the Super Bowl run. I want to feel the pain every week because it's going to make the victory that much sweeter. That's why I will not give up on the Vikings. I think the the heartbreak is part of the ride, and I am in for the long haul because when the day comes, when they finally do win the Super Bowl, Look for me to be running down Main Street, shirtless, waving my jersey over my head, screaming. It's going to be exquisite because of all of the years of, of just hanging on that edge and not quite getting there. Spanish. Necesitamos hacer un pared uh, en frente de Señor Cousins porque no podemos encontrar un otro quarterback. ¿Quién puede hacer las cosas que Señor Cousins hace, uh, hace? Es un poco... Mm, no entiendo porque no podemos uh, encontrar una offensive line. Y lo siento, mi español no está mucho bien. Es posible que um, yo debo decir que no podemos encontrar una línea ofensiva. Pero mm, yo no sé. Mi español no está mucho bien. Pero por favor, Dios, necesitamos offensive linemen que están fuerte y inteligente y pueden uh, jugar juntos. Porque Cousins uh, va a morir en el backfield. Por favor, necesitamos offensive, li offensive linemen. Dios mío. Sex Ed. Mm. All right. I can bypass all the predictions that I had on the Bucks. Honestly, the game played out a lot like I thought. I feel like a lot of people were overlooking how stout the Bucks defense was. Now, what I can say is that people I think are maybe overreacting a tish to how bad the Vikings looked on offense because the, Vi the the Bucks have a really good defense. A really good defense. All-stars. There are some serious concerns. Um, as my uh, Espanol-speaking amigo just said, the offensive line is a serious concern, especially this week going in to play the Eagles, who have an incredibly terrifying front four in their defense. It's going to be real scary. I hope that the Vikings offense is scheming ways to get the ball out quick or Cousins may just die. Which reminds me, I didn't even talk about the Netflix series Quarterback, which if you have Netflix, if you care about the Vikings, if you care about like, I heard a lot of people bashing it because it's not this like super in-depth, gritty interview documentary. I, I love what they did because I think it captures all the different facets of an NFL quarterback's life. You are playing a game in which you're being hit by 300 plus pound linemen multiple times every week. You're incurring these little injuries that accumulate over the course of a 17 or 18 or 19, God willing, 20 game season. You are raising, you know, you've got a family, you've got friends, you've got interviews that you have to do. You have, you know, charities that you're a part of. Your schedule is insane. Um, I think it did a really good job of capturing that. It especially captured Cousins' weird Weirdness. Just weirdness. I highly recommend watching it. Anyway, the Vikings are playing a really tough schedule this year. If they're going into Philadelphia to play against uh, the you know a Super Bowl team last year, then they host the Chargers, then they host the other Super Bowl team from last year, although the Panthers might be in that mix, and then like the 49ers. I multiple playoff teams in a row. It could be a real rough run for the Vikings here. But I also think the Vikings could be one of those teams that starts off the season with a losing record, you know, two and four, I don't I don't know. 
and everyone's written them off because, oh, what's going on? It's a disaster. After last year, they were, clearly were a fluke. Um, and then they start to play some soft. I mean, the, the whole schedule is pretty tough. But, you know, once we get out of the Super Bowl contenders stretch, maybe we can start to pile up some wins. Things start clicking. They could make a late season run for the playoffs. However, one thing I did want to talk about before the season that I, I didn't get a chance to is to appreciate the franchise that I love so much. In my time, I have watched franchises go from being Super Bowl contenders to the laughing stock of the NFL, looking at you Cardinals, and and vice versa. Teams that like were, I mean, the Chiefs were kind of a joke. They were kind of a pushover. You know, Alex Smith showed up and they kind of did some things and, and had some success. And then they got Mahomes and now they're perennial Super Bowl favorites. Things come and go, but the Vikings, the franchise that I love, has been stable. And to have, you know, Zimmer and, and Spielman have their run as coach and GM, respectively. We've had some turnover on the roster, but we've had these stars, these really good people and really good players that have stuck around. And now we've started a new regime, and there's probably going to be massive rebuilding. And we are looking at... Kirk Cousins is an unrestricted free agent at the end of this year. He has no new contract signed, not even really a lot of serious talk of a contract being signed. And we've got a rookie in Jordan Addison. Justin Jefferson wants a new contract, but I believe if I if I understand these things correctly, he's still got two years on his contract and can be franchise tagged twice. So he doesn't have as much leverage, but we do want to take care of him. We do want to keep him happy. I just want to appreciate what like the last decade of the Vikings have been. And if this is Cousins last year with the Vikings, we should absolutely appreciate the bejesus out of it. Because we have had Christian Ponder and Webb and that Josh Freeman, Donovan McNabb. We've had some atrocious quarterback play. And we have been wishing away Kirk Cousins, wanting him to go away, wanting him to be something else instead of just appreciating that we have a good quarterback. We have a good quarterback right now. We've had a good quarterback. Arguably top 12, top 10, we can get into that debate, whatever. But we have a good quarterback, and we're like wishing him to be a Hurts or a Josh Allen or a Patrick Mahomes, instead of saying, I was going to rattle off some players that I'm glad he's not, but that feels mean. That's not what this, that's not what this is about. He could be worse. We could have one of we could be one of the franchises that's fretting our week to week, game in and game out. I mean, there's a New York franchise that I can think of that just lost the quarterback they thought they were going to have for the whole year. And they would kill for a Kirk Cousins right now because they have a Super Bowl level roster and no one to distribute the ball. So please, this season, no matter what happens, if we start 0 and 3, 0 and 4, don't give up. We have a talented roster. We have, I think, a skilled coaching staff. We have a good quarterback. Let's not give up. Let's enjoy the ride because it could all go away very quickly. Here's the 2023, the year of the mead. I will try to quickly go out and find a horn to drink mead out of. Skull feel a fair Vikings fans and my family and non-Vikings fans who watch this. Bless your hearts. Mm. It's going to be a good year. And go Vikings. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention, like, yeah, this is not my normal sport coat, but the Vikings finally, 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 for the first time since like 2009, brought back their throwback jerseys. They're so much better than the weird, creative, artistic... Uh, interpretive dance stuff that Nike does with the Vikings jerseys. Uh, this this should be their home jersey. Knock it off with the weird fonts and the weird numbers and the weird stripes. Make a football uniform. Now, go Vikings.